Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Ronnie? Rick, Rick. Before, go back, go back to where you were, Acts 319. When the Bible tells us to repent, right? And be converted. Why do we have to be converted? No. Okay, so when you say our ways are not acceptable, and you say we what? We have to be cleansed. We have to be cleansed, okay. Go back. To go back. To the ways of the Lord. So that we can be accepted from the Lord, right? So now, why why are we dirty? Let me make a plan. Because you say we have to be cleansed. Right. You're absolutely right. Why are we dirty? You know, why are we dirty? Okay. The sins of the world. Okay. I, I like what you said. The sins of the world. Can you give me some sins that make us dirty? Let it out. Almost everything. Give me First Timothy uh, one and nine. I, I, I mean, because there's a reason we up here. First off, we up here to teach you your nationality. Who are you? I'm a black woman. You're a, see, you're a black woman. We've been up here teaching you for how long? Okay, and you say you're a black woman. What's your nationality? I'm part of the 12 tribes of Israel. You're part of the 12 tribes That's right. of Israel. That's right. Why is that so important, my sister? Because these laws were given to us. So when you say we dirty and we need to be cleansed, Right. We need to be cleansed from the rest of the world. That's, That's right. We following the ways of our oppressors. Right. Read what you got. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So, we're preaching the laws of God to what? An unrighteous people. Right. We're only unrighteous because right now we're not walking in the laws of God. Right. Right. God called us a holy people, right. a righteous people, but right now we're on the bottom because we turned away from it. That's, That's right. right. Okay, read it again. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 9. Yeah. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So the law is not made for a righteous man. Who's it made for? But for the lawless uh -huh. and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. So now, the officer was saying, Today is the day of atonement. Right. Right. So what we're about to read, these sins that we're in as a people, no. today God is saying, today I'm going to forgive you Bring it out. of those sins. That's, That's right. right. Let's see some of the sins he's going to forgive us of. Bring it out. For unholy and profane, for murderers, he's going to forgive us for being murderers. Bring it out. Read of fathers and murderers of mothers, uh -huh. for manslayers, uh -huh. for whoremongers. He's going to forgive us of being whoremongers. Right. Read. 
for them that defile themselves with mankind. What does that mean, them that defile themselves with mankind? No. What does that mean? Say again? Homosexuality. Right. Now, this is something that we have learned from our oppressors. Did not the so-called black president that they gave us say it's legal for a man to marry a man? For a woman to marry a woman? Right? Who was he representing? Because they say, we gave you a black president. Right. Was he representing the Most High God? Or was he representing the ways of this place? Right. No. no, he was representing the ways of this place. Right, he was representing the ways of Babylon. Right, right. Okay, read. For whoremongers, uh -huh. for them that defile themselves with mankind, uh -huh. for men stealers, uh -huh. for liars. What's a man stealer? Bring it out. What's a man stealer? Give me an example of a man stealer. You don't know? Just think about your last name. Bring it up. Oh, okay. The slave holder. The slave masters. Right. Did they not steal us from where we were? Right. And bring us here? Right. Are we not still here? The children of those men that they stole. Are we not still here? Men stealers. How else do we steal each other today? Bring it out. Huh? Yeah. Sex slavery. Oh, right. Do not black men and black women pimp each other out. Bring it out. Do we not do that today? Bring it out. Read it again. Bring it out. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 10. Uh -huh. For whoremongers, uh -huh. for them that defile themselves with mankind, uh -huh. for men stealers, See? for liars. For what? For liars. Do black people lie? All the time? All the time. That's right. All the time we lie. Read. For perjured persons. Uh-huh. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of, of the blessed God, if there's anything else contrary to sound doctrine, what does it mean? What is sound doctrine? Give me that a proper for is good, a good word for someone going against it. Okay. What do you say, sister? What's sound doctrine? The law. The law? Okay, let's see. Let's read it out the Bible. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 2. Bring it out. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. This is why we are teaching our people must repent. Let's go back to Acts 319 and come back to God's laws. Right? That's right. Matter of fact, where you get that? Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Because we're going to go back a little bit. We're going to go back a little bit in the history. You ever heard of Moses? Yes, of course. What did Moses look like? Well, the picture of Moses, he's supposed to be a white man, long hair. You know what I mean? But okay. he's not He's not a he's, white man. He's not a white man. What do you say? Let's get that next. It's 219. Let's get a depiction of Moses. Then we're going to go to something that Moses told us. Right. From the beginning. Bring it up. Right? Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, and verse 19. Uh -huh. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. What do the original Egyptians look like? Bring it out. What? They're black. Black. That's right. Dark people, right? Right. Let's jump up. The, verse 15. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. So I just wanted to jump up so that you, to keep it in context, we're reading about Moses, all right? Let's jump back down to verse 19. Verse 19, and they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the head of the shepherds. So Moses was confused for an Egyptian. Right? Bring it up. So we know the original Egyptians were dark people. What's that say Moses was like? Bring it out. According to the Bible, not what we've seen, uh, uh, Yul Brenner and all the movies, Charles Heston. Charles Heston. Charles Heston. Right. See, that's what that's part of that brainwash. But, but Moses' originality was a Jew. He was a Jew. He, he was from the tribe of Levi. Yes. That's right. Yes. He was a Jew. Right. Yes. Moses, right here. Yep. From right. the tribe of Levi. That's right. right. 
because they were the priests. Right. They were the ones that taught us the law. Right. Bring it out. You understand? So now, let's go back. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Let's see what Moses said to us. Okay? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel. And now who? Israel. What's your nationality? <laughs> You're an Israelite. That's, That's right. right. Where's your father? Let's, let's make sure. Your father on this sign somewhere? Um, okay, so I am an American black and I'm an Indian. Okay, which one is American black? No, no, which one? Your father or your mother? My mother. Your mother? No, my father. Your father. Okay, and you say your mother is Indian. American no, Indian? No, my mother was American. My father was American Indian. Your father was American Indian. So then, that's the slave term, American Indian. Right. What did God call it? Bring it out. Gad. Gad. That's, that's right. right. Gad. The tribe of Gad. Right. Okay? Look, let me show you something. Let me show you something right quick. This is what they did to your forefathers. You ever heard of a baker's dozen? You ever heard that term, baker's dozen? Because that's how they would hang us, okay? If your forefathers didn't bring Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors back enough gold, they would cut off our hands, they would hang us. You know, you understand? Yes. Now, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. This is what they would do to us, okay? Does that look familiar today? Yep. That look familiar today, don't it? Us being led away, handcuffed, right? right. Chained. This is us in our glory. Look, look, look how they dress. This is what fringes. Bring it up. We wear today. Bring it fringes. Up. That's right. right. This is coming back to our history and our culture. Right. Right. right now, our people are so lost. We think rap music is culture. Right? Right on. What we see in these visual guys, these visual aids are showing us our true culture. That's our right. true lineage. Okay, you put that down. Bring it out. So now, let's go back. 10 and 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? So now, when you hear the word require, what does that mean? What he wants. What he wants from the is that an option? No. 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 no requirement is what has it. it has to be done. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. To do what? To fear the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. To walk in all his ways. Uh -huh. And to love him. And to love him. How do you love God? Can you, can you give God a hug? Can you give God a kiss before you go to bed? Yeah. You kiss God before you go to bed? Yeah. How you do that? I pray. I talk to him. Okay, I talk to him like but, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking, can you kiss God before you go to bed? Not physically. Not physically, okay. But, through my words, through my tears, through my cries, he hears me. And okay. I talk to him. Okay, we're going to deal with that. We're going to do it. I like okay. that. So I when, he, when I talk to him, when I, when I verbalize I mean, like to him, uh, okay. how I feel. Right. You tell God how you feel. Go ahead. Go ahead. He tells you what he's going to do for you. Okay. What about you, my brother? Can you hug God? You can't. You can't. Can you give? Can you give God a pound? A high five? How do we love God? By following His word. Let's read it. Let's read it. You notice that. As we teach, we keep going back to what the Bible says. Right. We're not, we're not teaching you about when we woke up this morning, what God told us in our ear. Right. Like you hear in the Christian church. We're not going to tell you, I had a dream and Moses told me. No. We're going to go to the word of God. Let's show you why. First, give me first uh, Peter 4 and 11, and then we're going to get what it means to love God. Bring it out. Okay? Again, what are we teaching our people? 
Today is the day of atonement. Today, the Most High God will forgive you of your sins. But there's work that you gotta do. You gotta repent. You gotta change. It ain't like we, we learned in the Christian church. Oh, I accept the Lord Jesus in my heart now. I'm saved. That's what we was taught in the Christian church. Right? But then we go right back to our sins. Read it up. Right? Read what you got. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 11. If any man speak, if any man speak, meaning if any man is teaching you what? God's word, the gospel. Read. Let him speak as the oracles of God. So now what's that mean? Bring it out. That means we got to stay here as what is written. Okay? This is what the foundation is built on. Not my interpretation, but as it is written. Okay? Let's go to 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John 5 and 3. Let's see what love is. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God, uh -huh. that we keep his commandments. That we do what? That we keep his commandments. Now, oh. I want you to jump up to verse 2. I want you to pay attention. Check this out. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. So now, who are the children of God? We are. We are. We are. Who are we? The Israelite. The Israelite. That's right. So now, read chapter 5 and 2 again. By this, we know that we love the children of God. By this, we know that we love our fellow, fellow Israelites. That's right. Read. When we love God. When we love God and keep his commandments. Read. That's right. For this is the love of God. Uh -huh. That we keep his commandments. Uh -huh. And his commandments are not grievous. What's that mean, his commandments is not grievous? What's that word grievous it's not, mean? It's not with sorrow. Okay, what you say, my brother? I say that it's not where we can uh, interpret and listen to it. Okay, it means it's, it's, it's not hard to do. That's right. He didn't give us commandments that was hard for us to do. Right. Okay, so let's go back to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Let's go back there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, uh -huh. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, uh -huh. to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, right. which I command thee this day, for thy good. For whose good? For thy good. So now, the commandments was given to us to keep us safe. When we teach our people that we have to repent and keep God's commandments, in America, we have been taught how to hate each other. In America, a man has been taught how to make babies, but not raise babies. In America, a woman has been taught how to hate the black man. Right. Is that not true? Yeah. Have we not been taught how to steal from each other, kill each other, sell drugs to each other, abort our babies? Have we not been taught these things in America? That's why we need to convert. So when we read Acts 3.19, when we read that we must convert, we're not just reading it so it to sound good. Yeah, I gotta convert. What do you have to convert for? You know what you struggle with. You know what you struggle with. Some things we can see as an outward appearance of what you struggle with, but then there are some hidden sins that we all battle. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out, uh -huh. when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So now, the Bible said we got to repent, right? Go back to Psalm 1911. We got to, we have to repent. Matter of fact, no, give me um, Ezekiel 18.30. What does it mean to repent now? Now, now that we went through the sins of our people and the understanding of the law and God's laws, what must we, what, what does it actually mean to repent? Repent means to turn away from it. 
Right. So those sins you know that you struggle with today, you must do what? Stop. 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 Turn away. From Turn away. Like power. While Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.